Hello and good morning, everyone, um, or good evening. Um, thank you for joining us for today's session. This is ISA orientation, where we are, our office, ICP, is joined by Indian Students Association, um, and they are going to give you an orientation and share with you important information that you will absolutely need to know in order to enjoy your time and be successful here at the University of Texas at Dallas. My name is Tamara West, and I'm a program coordinator in the Intercultural Programs Office. Now, before we begin, I do want to go over some um, logistics. Okay, trying to move to the next slide. Okay, so this event is being recorded, um, so please we ask that you not record the session because if you start to record the session, it will actually stop our recording. So this is this session is being recorded by us and it will also be made available on our international student orientation page. Um, so please allow for about two business days so that we can um, process this video and um, upload it to our website. We also ask that you keep your cameras and your microphones turned off. We will have opportunity for question and answer section um, at the end of this um, session. Um, we also have three dots that are available to you if you would like to turn on live captioning um, for additional um, language. We are actually going to turn it over to ISA and um, I am going to stop sharing my screen because we're going to um, switch out with um, um, with ISA so that we can have their um, slides up on the screen. So I'm just going to ask Flower if she can bring up the slides. So please bear with us a moment. And in the meantime, I will call the first ISA presenter um, if they could turn their camera on and microphone um, to be ready for the presentation. Okay, um, I see you're on Sa Salish. Yes. Okay, thank you, you can go ahead. Thank you so much, Tamara. Um, welcome everyone. My name is Silas Shrira. I'm one of the anchoring officers for ISA. We also have our other anchoring officer, Dara Patel with us. Other officers such as our president, Pooja Kumari, and our public relations officer, Richa Shukla, are on the call as well. We are glad you all are here for the webinar today. Today's agenda will consist of the following. Dara and I will be talking with you about ISA, what we do, and what events we conduct on campus. We also have ISSO Director Josephine, who will be answering questions on immigration. Finally, we will have our FAQ session at the end, so save all your questions. We'll be answering them shortly. Next slide. Congratulations, everybody. You've made it. You've made it into one of the most esteemed universities. On behalf of ISA, we wish you best of luck to all of the students who are attending this call and more. We know you have so many questions, doubts, and enquiries. There's a quote in Harry Potter, if you've read it before, help is given at Hogwarts when asked for. We have a similar quote, help is given at ISA even if not asked for. Everyone, ISA is here to help. It's our job to make it a smooth transition for you into a different environment. Next slide. So some information about us. The Indian Student Association is a nonprofit uh, sociocultural association within the student organization at UT Dallas. Uh, ISA represents up to 2,500 plus Indian students enrolled at our university. We are the largest Indian student community, and we have an alumni network with 6,000 plus members in the state of Texas. Uh, we, you, so we manage fall and spring pickups of 1,200 plus Indian students admitted to UT Dallas every year. So originally, ISA was designed to manage these fall and spring pickups, and we have grown ever since then. We now do a lot more than managing fall and spring pickups. We used to provide temporary accommodations to students. Even though the COVID situation is getting back to normal, 
we will not be providing temporary accommodations this year. The reason is that some people are still hesitant to provide temporary accommodation due to the new Delta variant. We organize 15 plus events and celebrate Indian festivals around the year, and we conduct three plus webinars, including this one for students like you all before your arrival at UT Dallas. Uh, we have a program called the Buddy Program, where we provide personalized mentoring to students who have specific questions about their major. Uh, next, next slide, and I'll hand it over to Dara, who's the other anchoring officer. Hello, everyone. So that was what ISA does and will keep doing for the Indian students. Now, let us see the people responsible for getting those things done and put faces to the team of the Indian Student Association. The faculty advisor of ISA is Professor Gaurav Shekhar. The people who are coming to JSOM in UTD must have heard of him as he is also the program director for Amis Business Analytics. Professor Shekhar is associated with UTD for many years now, and he is the one who has initiated many programs that ISA holds today. Next slide. Next in line is our President Pooja Kumari and Vice President Ekansh Gupta, followed by our General Secretary Raj Kumar. Apart from the leadership roles in ISA, many other officers assist in conducting every event and activity done by ISA. All the officers and volunteers together make things happen. So the officers for ISA 2021 team are as follows. Uh, Meet Mahawakar as our treasurer. Richa, Richa Shukla, public relations officer. Next slide. Eshwarya Sangli and Siddharth Agarwal are our SOC officers. Prasad Mulay, Webhav Deshmukh, Dharini Gandla, Sai Savra, Bhupati Raju, and Neil Cheda are events and logistics officers. Uh, next slide. We have Pranali Saban as our finance officer, Anand Arnab as webmaster, Pooja Sharma and Roshni Dhami as our social media officer. Next slide. Sakshi Singh and Ria Sood are design and creative officers. Sidra Ahmed is our content officer. Sailesh and I, Dhara, are your anchoring officers. Next slide. Sandeep Vedamurti, Rajkumar Gupta are sports officers. Chinmay Patel is media and photography head. Divyansh Dhaya and Akanksha Jagdade are music officers. And the last but not the least, Aarti Rachuri is our dance officer. Next slide. Service before self, the motto ISA feeds on. It's what we believe in and it's what we do. We briefly saw what ISA does and what this association is about. But if we have to sum up everything about the association, it is service before self. Pickups can be our exhibit A here. We understand how overwhelming it can be to fly in a foreign country and reach the destination after such a long journey. This is the reason ISA provides pickups for the incoming students as it is natural for you to feel a little insecure due to the unfamiliarity in the beginning. This winter was bad in Texas. The winter storm brought record breaking temperatures which led to outages and shortages. However, the ISA team made sure that all of us stayed fine and they went out of their way to arrange food and water for those who were in need. We wish to take this legacy and motto ahead. Apart from some difficult times, ISA makes you feel at home. It is basically your home away from home. From Swatantrata Divas to Diwali, we will celebrate everything, even virtually if need be. Next slide. Today we will be discussing uh, quite a few topics. We will begin with the tuition fee, the deadlines in the academic calendar in detail. Then we will shed some light on the portals that are available for the students. We will also introduce the buddy program and then let you know about the ISA membership and how to become an integral part of ISA. The next topic is probably what all of us want to talk about the most, the housing options. 
the last topic for the day would be the events held by ISA followed by some FAQs. Next slide. So tuition fee here uh, we will begin with the tuition plans that are available for the students. There are two types of plans that we have guaranteed and variable. The in the guaranteed plan tuition fee is locked for consecutive 12 semesters. The rates are a bit higher uh, in the first year of your uh, plan, but then they remain the same throughout uh, your plan throughout the 12 semesters. Whereas in variable plan, the rates will vary each year. Uh, they might not inflate a lot or they might. It's not fixed because it's a variable plan, but the rates will be a little lower in the first year of your plan. Then comes your payment plans. So there are three types of plans that are available. Uh, the first one being direct, that is you pay your whole, uh, whole fee, the whole total amount that you are being shown in your statement in a go at once. So that's what you do for your direct payment. Then comes installments. So for installments, you need to enroll in easy pay and the setup fee for that will be $25 and it's a one time fee. So for fall and spring semesters, you will have to pay your fee in four individual installments and for summer term, you will have to pay it in three installments. Then comes your short term loan. So to enroll in a short term loan, you will have to do it through Orion by the payment deadline of your regular session. A short term loan plan will cover only your tuition and course related fees. This loan would make sure that none of your classes are being dropped. The payment deadlines for those loans are approximately 60 days from census day and the payment includes the tuition course related fee and a 1.25% of your origination fee. So that was all about the payment plans. But if you want to know more about your tuition plans and your payment plans, you can go to uh, UTD Bursar's website and check all of it in detail. If possible, we will share the link with you. By now, you all must have visited the page once. If not, I would request you to go visit the page yourself and uh, check what all these plans are and what they say so you can decide for yourselves. The next comes the modes of payment. So it is uh, either you pay it by direct deposit or international flywire or submit a cashier's check. Uh, once you are here, it gets easier to pay it uh, using direct deposit or international flywire is always an option. So it's up to you, whichever is convenient can be done. Next slide. Now I would like to hand it back to Selesh. Thank you, Dara. So everyone, remember to keep track of your deadlines. OK, look, I know all of us have so much on our plate that sometimes we forget or miss our deadlines. Understandable, considering looking at this calendar with so many dates. I would recommend keeping in mind three, just three. One is the registration payment deadline, which is August 19th. Remember, the registration payment deadline is August 19th for every one of you. The full refund deadline is August 22nd. So suppose you want to withdraw from all of your courses due to a change in major. August 22nd is the date to go. Dropping a course, that would be September 8th. Keep these dates in mind, write it down, set a reminder, whatever. Make sure you have these dates in mind so you can plan out in advance. If you have any more questions, then you can check out the calendar. You can email the bursar office or your academic advisor, you, or you can ask us. Uh, next, next slide. So here are some import, import, important and useful portals that you must bookmark on your machine. The iComet portal is used to request documents that you want from UTD or to go to UTD. The I-20 form is an example of this. So suppose you want to go to India and you want to request a form, then you would go to the iComet portal and request the requested form. Uh, and this portal is used to keep track of all of your important forms. Uh, the next useful portal is Galaxy. There are two parts to the Galaxy website. One is the Student Center. The Student Center consists of your academics, finances, and registration dates. So suppose you want to register, register for a class, or you want to get your transcript, or you want to manage your finances. All of that is done in the Student Center. Uh, you can manage these all in the Student Center. Galaxy also has an applicant center, which is more geared towards your application status to any program at UTD. E-learning, 
is another useful portal, uh, which is also part of Galaxy, and it's primarily used to check your grades for every class. Next slide. OK, now to the buddy program. We uh, mentioned a bit about the buddy program before, but now we'll elaborate on it. So the ISA created the buddy program to help uh, incoming students um, get a mentor who belongs to the same branch of study. So suppose a student is majoring in ITM, then if he signs up for the buddy program, he will also get a mentor uh, who is also part of I I ITM. And this mentor will be essential in answering that student's questions about his major, his department, about activities that happen on campus, about campus life in general. All of the specific questions that you all have, uh, the mentor will help and guide you. So once you register using the following link, which will be shared with you all, uh, you will be assigned a mentor and the contact details of him or her will be shared with you as soon as possible. You can stay in contact with him or her until you get adapted to the culture at UTD. Next slide. OK, if you want to be part of ISA, you have to be OK. So first of all, this is for registering for ISA, right? So if you want to be part of ISA, you have to rem remember every one of you is eligible. So if you register, you will receive meeting invites, emails about activities, events uh, that are taking place in ISA. What we all would recommend on behalf of ISA is for you to become a volunteer. Preach your motto, service before self. Why? Because we were all prospective students just like you. Since we were in your position, we want to help and guide you all. By becoming a volunteer, you can guide future prospective students who come after you to UTD. It also gives you a chance to, be, uh, to get involved in something on, uh, on campus and allows you to network with people you didn't know. Uh, next slide, and I'll hand it back to Dara. We'll talk about housing. Thank you, Selesh. So these are the most popular popular housing options that we have. Most of the students live in the communities here, mostly because all these are the are on the UTD's bus route. So the communities are divided based on the two sides of the university, one to the east and other to the west. The communities on the east side are North side, Marquis at Waterview, Pradera, Estates of Richardson, homes of Priory Springs, Priory Creek. The bus frequency there is 30 minutes. That is, you will get one bus every 30 minutes. And the communities on the west are Estates on Frankfurt, Pearl on Frankfurt, Ashwood, Palencia, Courtyards at Campbell, Callum Coats. So the bus, bus frequency there is 20 minutes. That is you will get at least one bus every 20 minutes. Next slide. All the communities have their perks. We would suggest that you go on each website and check the floor plans and amenities provided by the community. After that, you can decide the best option for yourself based on your preferences. The apartments are not available in some communities at the moment but you still have quite a few options. You will get better options if you start applying early on. Next slide. So once you apply for an apartment and you get a reply with a quote, and if you are satisfied with the quote, you will have to sign a contract to lease that apartment. Every community will have this contract. Some terms might differ, but it will almost be the same. So you will have a single contract with various forms uh, that you need to sign electronically and submit to the community, mostly via email. So the contract will have pet agreement, rental agreement, caution agreement, and things like that. So it will all be in a single form. So all you need to submit is that one form that they send you. Go through it, fill in uh, every detail that's asked for properly, and sub submit it back. Um, I see that someone is raising their hand. Uh, there is an FAQ session later on, so I request that you save your questions for then because we won't be taking any questions at the moment. OK, so that was about the sign. Next comes the documents that you have to submit. So the documents that you need to submit are the electronic copies of your I-20 passport and visa. If you have a quote, 
and you are waiting for the visa just let the community know that you can request them to finalize your lease saying that a uh, one member of your group has the visa uh, others and that others will get it soon by so and so dates they might or might not allow it but do try that even if one member of your uh, group has got their visa also every community has its own security deposit policy and you are expected to pay that when you move in into the apartment once you are done with your lease talk to them and ask them to let you know about all the things that they need from you on the day you move in if you are un unclear about anything ask them to be a little more specific and make sure that you have detailed information about everything that needs to be done on the day you are moving in because it will be a lot chaotic if there is something that you are missing on the day of your move in because you will have all your luggage with you and everything so make sure that you know what is what all they need on the first day so that there's no problem on that day for paying the rent you have three options it's either by demand draft electronic money transfer or fly wire or money order uh, once your bank accounts and everything is set up here uh, mostly everyone prefers electronic money transfer but you can send demand drafts or money orders can also be easily sent uh, through any nearby walmart stores so it's up to you it's your own preference uh, i will hand it back over to sailesh now yeah next slide yes so i say in total has nine festival celebrations this includes many including the fall bash the udon sports event and sangam which is uh, the flagship or main event for ISA. Um, so next slide. So the Fall Bash um, is hosted every year uh, and it helps students, incoming students like you all, to get to know your batchmates more. So um, I know you all have been busy with, you know, getting, uh, so you all would have been busy getting accustomed to the campus life, um, your housing and whatsoever right but uh, you wouldn't all have had the chance to start networking and connecting with your peers so fall bash is essentially designed to help you do that uh, for sports lovers uh, the udon sports event uh, takes place uh, around november and uh, people who are interested in participating can join that event so uh, this is the chronological order of all the events that we have uh, for their, for every year. So we start off with Independence Day, then we have Ganesh Chaturthi, we have Fall Bash, we have Navaratri, Diwali, and then we have the Udon Sports Fest. Uh, next slide. Uh, we have Republic Day in January. We have Sangam in February, which allows you to show your leadership skills and allows you to showcase your talent. We have Holi in March, and we have I Week in uh, April, which um, allows ISA to showcase its culture amidst many other cultures um, on campus. Next slide. So here are some pictures that were taken from previous events. So uh, Independence Day in 2019. Um, next slide. Uh, Ganesh Chaturthi. Next slide. We have the Fall Bash, which takes place. Uh, Navaratri, um, next slide. Diwali. We have Republic Day. We have Sangam, which is our flagship event. So if you don't attend, uh, yeah, yeah, we have the, I, yeah, you go, yeah, sure. So uh, if any of you <laughs> don't um, attend any, any event, try to at least attend Sangam, which is because it's one of our main events. So Sangam, and the next slide. We have ISA dance crew, we have our dance crew. Next slide, we have our music crew. Next slide, yeah. And uh, if you want to uh, reach us, then you can do so through our website, uh, www.isautd.org. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and WhatsApp. Uh, we thank you all so much for being here. And uh, now uh, Dara and I will hand it over to Josephine, who's the ISSO director, and she will be answering all of your immigration related questions. Thank you. 
thank you so much, um, team ISA. What a wonderful presentation. Um, and a special thank you for giving a shout out to iWeek, which ISA has a wonderful tradition of participating in and always doing a great job of representing the um, multicultural diversity within the country of India. So thank you for that. Um, and yes, uh, Silas, you are correct. We are going to be joined by uh, Josephine Vita. Um, very soon she'll be coming on with us. So um, we're going to open an opportunity for question and answer section uh, session with her. Um, since she is our, you know, kind of special guest speaker for today, um, we, we know in general that people do have a lot of questions that they want to ask, but we ask that um, since we have Josephine Vita here with us, um, if you do have questions specifically related to immigration matters, um, she's the best person to ask. So, um, yes, we might have other questions, you know, about health stuff and other things but um if you do have questions about immigration um she is definitely the person so um we are going to um go ahead and open the chat um give me like a minute to do that because it's a little bit of a process but you can um post your questions in the chat for her um and you can also raise your hand as well i will be monitoring the chat and the raising of hands so please be patient um, but I see Josephine. Josephine, we meet again. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yes, good morning. And I'm just going to uh, turn it right over to you. Oh, OK. Well, uh, for those of you whom I have not yet met on any other forums or, or uh, opportunities, my name is Josephine Vita. I am the director of the ISSO. I've been in this role for about uh, actually since 2014. I'm so glad to see so many international students are excited to join us. Uh, we've been watching things very carefully in India for the last, I don't know, six months at the very least to see what we can do. Uh, I just want to give you some resources about the I-20. I think we've issued about I-20s to about 2,800 of you all. So I hope most of you already have your I-20. If you do not yet have your I-20, um, if you don't yet have your I-20, I'm hoping that you uh, at least have submitted your documentation and you are pending your I-20 application. Uh, you have two choices to start your classes. Those are going to be um, H-23 if you're able to make it on time, but for the, the many of you who are having visa interviews that are gonna make that date impossible, we encourage you to fill out the visa update form and let us know, uh, and we can issue the I-20 for you to arrive October 18, in the 30 days before October 18th. Um, and that will give you some flexibility to enroll in your home country, participate in your classes, and then when you're able to join in those 30 days uh, in September and October to be able to, to join us on campus so we can see you on person in person. Um, I'm doing a webinar every Wednesday. Actually, I did one this morning um, at 8 o'clock CST. I'll be doing them every single Wednesday until certainly till the end of July, possibly through August. So we know that uh, sometimes uh, emails are, are taking a little bit longer. I do have a couple of tips for you for making sure that your emails get answered um, quickly, but nonetheless, you can always come to my webinars. Uh, they're usually small and I can answer your questions. I do want to encourage all of you to be very intentional about reaching out to the right office for your questions. The ISSO can help you with immigration matters related to your F1, F2, J1, J2 status. Um, questions related to vaccines, orientation, payment of fees. You really want to identify the correct office um, that can uh, answer your question quickly and we can continue to focus our efforts on supporting you with uh, for immigration matters. So I see that there are um, some questions. Uh, uh, Tamara, are you going to be uh, letting me know what questions you want me to answer? Yes, uh, definitely. Um, I will go ahead and um, look into the questions that students have for you. Um, OK, so I do have a first question. It says I submitted my I-20 request on June the 10th and I haven't received my I-20. Can you please check? So I, I can't check while I'm speaking to all 500 of you all. Uh, what I would recommend you do is reach look on our ISSO advising page for the chat hours. Reach out to Berkeley and Derek there. That seems like um, uh, I know that's 20 days, 20 calendar days. It's probably about a, um, 
two weeks, reach out to them and so that they can give you a status update. Okay, thank you. Okay, and yes, I'm just kind of as a general um, advisor, advisory, um, you know, Josephine will not be able to look into your specific case um, because she's on this um, chat and so she doesn't have access to look up your individual files. So just kind of a general advisory. Okay, um, we do have another question that says, can you kindly post the link of the form where we can be a part of ISA? So I, um, if I can ask Salish um, or Dara, if y'all can go ahead and post that in the chat, thank you. Um, another the question says for students joining in October for MSCS, will that hamper the opportunity for internships as we won't be on campus for the complete two semesters? Yes, that is actually correct. So um, just to give you a broad overview, there are two ways to be eligible for CPT authorization for your internship. The first way, which is the one that affects uh, the vast majority of you, is that you need to be in the US um, uh, fully enrolled for one academic year. So that's going to be uh, a fall and a spring consecutively or a spring and a fall consecutively, right? That's going to be the majority of the programs. If you arrive um, for the eight week semester, eight week term in the United States, you will not have enough weeks of instruction in the United States. We cannot count that fall as part of your eligibility for CPT. For you to be able for us to be able to count fall, you would need to arrive um, by or around the start date. And actually, August 30th is about the latest we would ask you to attempt the United States attempt to enter the United States with an 823 start date. So you need to be here by then, and then you would be eligible to count that fall semester as part of your CPT eligibility. And that would, that includes the MSCS. There are five programs for which. Um, Eligibility for CPT is based on completing 18 credits. Um, those are going to be uh, MS in Management Science, Marketing, BUON, ITM, Supply Chain Management, maybe it's six. I know CE is one of them. Um, it's on our website, so please double check or you can check with your program director. Those ones, if you come later, then it doesn't affect you because really they're looking at when you complete your academic program, um, your academic credits uh, for eligibility. Great, thank you. OK, we do have another question. Um, let's see. It says that in the previous webinar last Friday, the issue of non-degree visas being displayed due to minor issues was brought up. Um, and and they're saying, uh, Josephine, you had uh, mentioned something about trying to allocate some additional resources to check and resolve such cases. Um, they want to know if this process has already started. Do you remember this? Yes, I do. And so um, this is a webinar that I did for students in the MSCS program. We had about 200 students. I had a great time kind of talking to you all and make, answering all of your questions. So yes, we were able to um, uh, get more staff support for issuing those I-20s. We had said that we expect to complete that process by the end of the day on 6.30. Here, it is 9.30 a.m., so we also have the rest of the day today, and we expect that we'll be able to complete. Anyone who has a pending, who still has a pending I-20 for prerequisite issues, we expect that to be completed by the time we have our end of the day. Great, thank you. OK, um, and I do see that I, we have a hand raised, so I'm actually going to go ahead and call on, um, I believe the name is Suraj. Um, Suraj, um, if you can go ahead and turn on your mic and you can um, ask Josephine your question. Call in for Suraj. Suraj, are you still there? Do you still have a question for Josephine? OK, um, well, I'm going to move to the next person's hand that I see raised, which is um, Ratan Jad Raj Paul. So if there's a Ratan um, Jaj Paul, um, can you turn your mic on and ask Josephine your question, please? I just wanted to understand how does Flatwire work? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, you were cutting out there. Could you repeat your question, please? Yeah, I just wanted to understand how Flyware works. Oh, got it. Thank you. OK, we will answer that question for you in the chat. That's not a specific question for Josephine, um, but um, we can answer the question for you in the chat. Um, either someone from ISA or ICP. OK, we do have another hand that was raised. I'll get to this person, um, Rishab Sanghai. 
Uh, Rishab Sanghai, can you go ahead and turn on your mic and ask your question um, to Josephine? Uh, hello, Tamara and Josephine, and uh, thanks for uh, for the session. I appreciate Team IASA uh, making it a smoother process for us. I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, what are the vaccination requirements apart from COVID-19 vaccinations that we need to uh, take before entering the campus? Uh, something like the mandatory vaccination course. And uh, the second one is, uh, uh, the IAC team mentioned that this year they won't be providing uh, temporary accommodation. So uh, is that uh, like, we will we get another like pickup service from the airport? So those are the two questions I would like to have my answers. Okay, thank you. Um, regarding, so um, so just to kind of FYI, I post some helpful links um, in the chat. Um, since we do have uh, Josephine that is here, we wanted for this uh, to be a chance for us to ask her immigration related questions, but I do have some helpful links that um, talk about, mm -hmm. you know, the um, vaccinations, um, CDC, um, approved, you know, uh, vaccinations. Um, so check out the link, um, but I'll turn over to ISA so they can um, answer that question that you had for them. Yes. So, uh, thank uh, you. Sorry about this, but this year we will not be providing temporary accommodation just like last year. You know, the time when we came, we were uh, with the same situation and we had to either hire a mm -hmm. Airbnb or some kind of a hotel room or look for temporary accommodation which seniors were providing us. So that was a situation which mm -hmm. we faced. We were able to get it. So I really hope that you guys get it too. We have a lot of WhatsApp groups which we have shared the links with you. Uh, you can just ask the mm -hmm. seniors and I think you might get. And pickup services, yes, we will be providing the pickup services. The links have been shared with you. We are in association with Big Howdy, which is a local uh, team here who helps us with, uh, you know, pickup and pickup service. So uh, mm -hmm. we, the link we shared with you, you provide in all the details. When is your flight? What time is it? Uh, your photographs, all the necessary details. And uh, we have already got about 90 to uh, 100 uh, responses. So we're still looking forward for it. And we are arranging all the, uh, like we are in the process of basically uh, this pickup service. So do not worry about that. Okay, so thank you for your reply. Uh, just to confirm it with you, this will be provide the pickups will be provided to all the students who provide their details in the form or will it be a lottery yeah. kind of thing? No, no, uh, we will try to provide the service to almost everyone. We will inform mm -hmm. you much prior so that, uh, you know, you are well aware of whether we are providing you or not. It will, we will try to accommodate everybody basically. If not, mm -hmm. we will let you know. Yeah. Okay, no thanks again for, that, yeah, yeah. Thanks again for the uh, reply and uh, have a great day. You too. Thank, Thank you. you. OK, um, I do see one more hand. Um, I'm going to get to this hand and then I'll go back into the chat. Um, but I see that Venkata Kari has their hand raised. So um, Venkata um, or Venkata Kari, could you um, turn your mic on and ask Josephine your immigration related question, please? Yeah, uh, hi. Uh, thank you for giving this opportunity. Uh, my question is for Josephine. Uh, and the uh, problem is I'm currently on H4 and I'm not able to get my visa slot on time. So I'm planning to do one semester in H4 and rest of my semesters on F1. Will it affect my CPT or OPT is my question. So um, uh, what is academic program are you in? I am in ITM. Okay. No, it will not. Um, what they are looking for for ITM is the completion of 18 credits. So long as you're in F1 status at the time you're applying for CPT, then that's the eligibility thing that you're going to need to to figure out the timing for, right? So if you're looking to uh, do a change of status in the United States from your H4 to your current F1, or you're going to be traveling, you need to be in F1 status at the time you're requesting CPT. And so long as you were full time enrolled in the consecutive, I'm sorry, as long as you met, meet the 18 credit hours for your ITM degree and you're in F1 status, you should be uh, able to be eligible for it. Sure, got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. That's all. Thank, thank you so much, Venkata. Okay, we do have um, 
Oh, I had a question I was about to ask and the chat is lighting up. Um, please be understanding where we are trying to get to all of your questions. Also, if your questions have been answered already by Josephine or maybe they are available on the ISSO website. Um, so I might not be able to ask everyone's questions. Um, so uh, because there are a lot of them. So just please bear. OK, I had one and I lost it. And if you see me looking up, I literally am using two screens because <laughs> Um, it's a lot of questions. OK, um, someone was asking a question. Um, oh, it keeps. OK, sorry, give me one minute. Every time a new question gets added to the chat, then it gets um, it disappears from my site. OK, um, I see some questions about the TB test. Um, so that is more related to the um, either for our office or actually the Student Health Center. So if, if you are asking questions about the TB test, um, I do see several for that. So the Student Health Center um, will be taking care of that. Um, OK, someone said I have filled out the form for the airport pickup, but I haven't got any accommodations. Um, so they said I have left the space as blank. Um, so when can they fill it in again? I'm not sure. That sounds like an ISA question about the airport. Yeah. I guess there's a spot for accommodation. Yeah, so I can take that. Uh, so you, the form is open until August, you know, until the time you uh, decide to come in, until the day, a day or two before that, the form is open. So you can always come back and uh, go to the link again and update. We, we try to, you know, it's better that you provide the right information right now. But if you're if you do not know if you're not sure about your accommodation or where you're going to stay, you can come back once you're sure of that. You can come back and fill the form and update it, and uh, we will take care of that. Okay, great, thank you. And I do see some questions here um, for ISA. So I say feel free to answer questions people are asking about links and about the buddy program. Someone was uh, asking about a fee. Yes. Or I have shared the buddy program uh, okay. link as well as the ISA membership link, and there is no fee as such to be part of ISA. So, yeah. Great. Okay, I do have a question. It says, I have received the deferral admit today for spring 2022. Will I have to request a new I 20, Josephine? No. Um, once we see the um, deferral come through our system and there's usually a lag of about 24 hours once it's completed on the academic side, um, our advisors, the normal process is our advisors will review it. And if your financial documents are still valid um, and everything else appears to still be valid, we will go ahead and just issue that I-20 for you. You will not have to fill in a separate application. I do want to warn you, however, though, because we have a number of students who are trying to come for fall or trying to change their 823 to their 1018, we are prioritizing fall students right now. So if you are a spring 2022 student or you're deferring to fall 2022, please know that we are going to be uh, holding on to that for a lot longer than we normally would because we want to make sure everybody who can get here on 823 or 1018 comes first. Spring students aren't going to be able to start their visa process until September. So you have some time uh, for the visa application process, which begins 120 days before the start of classes. And of course, fall folks, we can't even issue an I-20 for you until um, a year, at least it's been a year. So please hold on for that. But if everything in your documents is still accurate, you do not have to have a new application. OK, OK, we do have another question. Um, very interesting question. It says, how do I contact ISSO apart from ISSO prospective? So there are several ways to get in contact with an advisor. If it's an advising question, the ISSO prospective email is one. We have the live chats that happen, I think, four days a week. Um, they're usually for an hour at a time and you're, it's an instant chat. There's no chat bot. They're actually real humans named Derek and Berkeley um, and they can answer your questions. Um, and they're also the ones taking appointments. So that's for advising questions. If you have just general questions like uh, information that's on our website, you can call our, our, our main line, which is 972-883-4189, but they're going to be student employees. They can direct you to information on the website. Okay, great. 
Okay, I, I did see another question. Um, this person is asking, they said, can I get a letter of support from the university to attach in our EA to get a visa date? Okay, so there's not going to be a letter addressed to you. We do have letters for the consulates um, that um, uh, what I can do, it's on, I'm sure it's on our website and, and, and it's probably been sent out, but if you still don't have it, um, you can um, reach out to us and we'll send it to you um, or I can attach it to, to try to upload it to this chat. It's a general one that tells them our start date, tells them about our university, requests their assistance with getting um, appointments. I do want to let you know that almost every single embassy that we have looked at, what they ask for for you to provide for an emergency or expedited appointment is your I-20. If you already have your I-20, you have the documents you need because they're looking at a start date within 60 days. Okay, great, thank you. And thank you because we um, at ICP, I do, we do get that question in our inbox as well, you know, asking us for a letter um, to take to the, um, the embassy for the interview. So thank, thank you for answering that. Um, okay, um, I'm seeing some questions here. I, I did see some people ask, and thank you, Josephine, because I saw that you answered a question in the chat. <laughs> um, someone was asking about the port of entry, and I see several other people asking. So maybe if you could just speak on that, like if the port of entry has to be Dallas, Texas. You do not have to arrive in Dallas as your first location in the United States. A lot of times people come and maybe they're coming to Chicago O'Hare or wherever. It doesn't matter. Um, as long as you are here by the start of classes, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Um, and here's another question. This person says, I have different signatures of the school officials on my soft copy of the I-20. Um, they said they have Berkeley for one and then the hard copy, um, it has Maria, um, which was received by a courier. And they said, will this be an issue during my visa interview, having those two different um, signatures? No, it will not. So we have 12 advisors, DSOs in our office. And throughout your time at UT Dallas, you're going to have I-20s issued from all of them. You do not have a single designated advisor. Whenever you're dealing with I-20s that you're using to present for an official purpose, you always want to use the one that's been issued most recently. So if you look at the bottom where the advisor signed it, there should be the date. That's your most recently issued I-20. That's what you would want to use for any purpose. Don't ever throw any other ones away, but it is normal and fine to have multiple I-20s signed by multiple people. That's going to be your, your experience in the United States. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, um, and someone asked the question, I'm not sure if you know what this is, but they said, can you please let me know about the ELS hold? Are you familiar with ES ELS hold? I do not. It's not from the un I international office, so you may want to check with your mm -hmm. academic department. I'm not sure what that is. And probably would be better to get a screenshot when you're asking people about it so that they can see it. Right, very good point, very good point. Um, okay, let's see. We do have more questions. Um, someone, well, so there's a question. It says how, well, someone was asking about how long it takes to receive a hard copy of the I-20 via courier in India. Yeah. So um, let me tell you several things, right? This whole pandemic has upended all of immigration ideas of what's an original I-20 and what's not original I-20. So we all need to kind of shift our thinking. If you have received an I-20 that was issued by an advisor, it was digitally or hand signed by the advisor and emailed to you, you can print that I-20, you can hand sign it, that is your original I-20. Um, the We have been given, DHS has given all of schools in the U.S. the latitude to not physically print it in the United States, put it on an airplane, waste all that carbon, right, sending it to you in your home country. We have done it to, uh, for some time, but we are phasing that out because we are observing it is not required for the visa interview. It is not required to enter the United States. Other schools are not issuing I-20s and have had no issues. So we are going to phase out of that uh, within the next uh, couple of weeks. So I want to give you a heads up. Um, okay. So um, print out the electronic version. Don't try to show it to anybody on your phone because the visa officer is not going to want to do that. The port of entry officer is not going to want to do that. Print it out. You hand sign it. That is your original I-20. 
in regards to your actual question, how long does it take for, for Express Mail to get to India? I don't know. I would say probably about five business days if it were to be sent. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, I'm going to ask you this question, Josephine, because I, I'm, I've noticed I've seen it from several different people. I know you already spoke about port of entry, but there is a specific question about immigration issues if they're traveling via um, Europe or Qatar. So I don't know if, I, if that makes a difference because they're coming in from Europe. So does it matter if they're coming in via, you know, traveling through Europe or Qatar to enter the United States? So what I think this might be coming from, and this is just a guess, is the presidential proclamations that are restricting or limiting travel from certain geographical areas. That's the only thing that I could think of that might be what's being discussed. F1 students who have an I-20 to start after August 1st are exempted from that restriction. If you were to come in now, you would have to leave your country, right? And if you, you had to go quarantine for 14 days in a country that's not on that list. Britain is absolutely on that list. I have no idea if Qatar is. Um, Britain, the Schengen area, they're all one of, on that list where you cannot come directly from those countries to the United States. You need to go to a third country, quarantine for 14 days, and then attend, enter the United States. However, as I said, that's for, for travel now. That affected our summer admitted students. Fall students who have an I-20 that starts 9-1 or later, 8-1 or August 1st or later, right? Um, don't have to do all of that running around the globe. Um, you can come, you can you can uh, have a layover in one of those countries that is on that list. Um, so long as your I-20 starts 8-1 or later. So it should not affect you. If that's what you're talking about with the presidential proclamation. If it's something else, I would need more context about where that question is coming from to see um, what advice I can give you. Great, thank you. Okay, now I'm going to switch it up and go over to the raised hands that we have. And I'm going to go ahead and actually call out the name so that people can prepare themselves. Um, not that everyone will be speaking at one time. Um, so just kind of prepare yourself. So first I'm going to call on Malvia Karan, then after that, um, Prinsi Doshi, and then after that, um, Asta. Is either Asta or Asta. So first, um, Malvia, Karen, um, can you turn on your microphone and ask Josephine your question, please? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, just want to uh, know, uh, I, have a, I have just one question regarding our uh, visa requirements. So I just want to know uh, whom we can approach to understand uh, that if my selected courses are fulfilling the visa requirements or not. OK, so um, if you are enrolled full time, which is graduate students is nine credit hours and undergraduates are 12. If you're enrolled full time, according to the academic plan that your your academic department gave you, they said you need to take these classes or here are some of your options. Pick pick some from this one. Then uh, the type of the, the subject matter of the class is going to meet your visa requirements, right? The second part of it is what is the modality of the class? How's the class being offered? Is it face to face or is it online or is it hybrid? As an international student who is entering the United all international students who've entered the US after March 2020 when the when the pandemic began. Immigration wise, you need to have at least one course. It doesn't matter how many credits one course that is either face-to-face -face or hybrid. Immigration-wise, you can have the other classes being online, so long as at least one of those courses is face-to-face -face or hybrid. So you need to meet those two things. The total number of enrollment needs to be appropriate, nine for graduates, 12 for undergraduates. The courses need to be within your degree plan towards your degree. You can't take basket weaving if you're not studying basket weaving, right? Um, they need to go towards your course and then the modality or the, the mode of instruction for new students need to be at least one course, regardless of credit, needs to be in person or hybrid. Now, if you, uh, Taking all of that information, you can apply that to your course enrollment to see if there's any issues. 
if we identify issues, we will contact you. But the thing I want you to remember is no news is good news when it comes to the ISSO. If we're emailing you about your course enrollment, it means we are talking to you and there's a problem. Don't assume that we're talking to everybody, right? Um, so then you need to address the problem. But if you don't hear from us, if classes start and you have not heard from us about your enrollment, that means we have already determined your enrollment is appropriate. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Malvia, for the question. OK, next we're going to call on Prinsi Doshi. Uh, Prinsi Doshi, if you could turn on your microphone and ask Josephine your question, please. Uh, I hope everyone is good. My, I have two questions. One question is just now, Josephine mentioned, right, that uh, there should be something like we should at least have one subject uh, on in person. How will we get that information? Like because right now when we have registered, right, our classes are both in person as well as hybrid mode. So how will we be getting that information that okay we have registered in person? That is my one question. So yeah. if you look at your enrollment or if you look at course book, if you're still trying to figure out your enrollment, it'll tell you the class modality. So if it says hybrid, if it says face to face or traditional, that's how you would know. So you could either go to the course book if you're looking and you type in which class, right? Um, it's A A C C T one zero zero five. It'll tell you the mode of instruction. Or if you're already registered in classes and you're looking at your course schedule, um, you should be able to see that information. If you're not sure where to look, you can reach out to the registrar's office. They can help explain where to find that information in Galaxy. Yeah, but will that be required for our port of entry? Do we have to carry anything to no. prove that yeah, we have no? No, okay. you don't have to require that. I mean, I if you're coming in October, it's not a bad idea because you're saying, hey, I've already started my classes. I'm coming to join my classes, but it's not a requirement for the port of entry. It's a requirement for you to maintain your status once you arrive in the US. When you're in the US, you need to be following F1 rules. That's when we will start really caring about your enrollment is when you're physically in the US. OK, and the second question, uh, like if I am traveling to US, like how the dates have come is we have our uh, uh, on campus orientation uh, on 18th and we have a TB test on 19th. And if we are arriving to US on 15th of August, suppose, will I be eligible to just come to on campus because I have taken on campus uh, stays or housing? So I, I will be allowed to come to the campus and stay. OK, I, I OK, if, if I understand what you are saying, you're asking about your eligibility to enter the campus. Yes, correct. Uh, will I be able to attend the class, attend the classes or anything within that days? Okay. Or should I do it for quarantine and then only I will be allowed? OK, so the dates that I heard you give, I think I heard you give August the, the 15th. Yeah, August 15th, we are landing to US and on 18th, 18th, we have an orientation. OK, so will I be eligible to uh, attend that orientation if I have registered? OK, I understand what you're saying. So um, to answer that question, what I would suggest is if you look in the chat, you might have to scroll up to find it. Um, I did post the link there for um, travel. If you're traveling into the United States, there are requirements. Um, I would. I would suggest for you to read that because you do have to follow the um, CDC guidelines. So look in the chat section if it is pushed up because of all the questions, just scroll, maybe scroll down. And um, we do have a section that literally says like travel guidelines. So read that section and you can find the answer there. OK, uh, another just one more thing. OK, it is that. Yeah, OK, sorry, I'm sorry. Um, I do have to allow for others. And actually, Josephine probably needs yeah, to yeah, sure. at some point. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, um, uh, Princey. Um, I appreciate it. Um, Josephine, do you have a few more minutes or do you need to go? I have 15 minutes. I can stay until 10 and 15. OK, thank you so much. OK, all right, let me move on. So I did um, um, call upon some other people who had their hands raised. So um, Asta, um, Asta, if you are still here and you have a question for Josephine, Josephine, please go ahead and ask her your question. 
हेलो या गुड गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन या इट्स आस्था सो हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल यस या ओके सो आई हैड द क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग इज एम एस सी एस प्रोग्राम वैलिड फॉर एटीन क्रेडिट क्राइटेरिया इफ आई अराइव इन ऑक्टूबर एम एस सी एस कंप्यूटर साइंस एम एस सी एस इज नॉट वन ऑफ द प्रोग्राम एलिजिबिलिटी इज बेस्ड ऑन एटीन क्रेडिट यू हैव टू बी इन दूस फॉर वन एकेडेमिक ईयर फॉर टाइम एंड रोल थैंक यू सो मच यू वेलकम Oh, thank you. Okay, um, next person I'm going to call on. Um, okay, maybe their hand was raised, but it's not anymore. Um, Arjun, um, Arjun Reddy. Um, if you have a question for Josephine, please go ahead. Arjun Reddy. And Tamara, if I may answer one of the questions that the students uh, were asking about. Concerning quarantines, we have just posted a link in which you will find information concerning quarantine. UT Dallas follows the CDC guidelines, but what you need to consider is your own vaccination status because the quarantine and uh, test that you will have to take uh, and therefore your decision to come to orientation or not will be based on your vaccination status. We have just sent an e-blast, uh, an email to all of you uh, concerning opportunities. Oh, hello, Leticia. Okay, um, I cannot hear. Josephine, can you hear Leticia? Okay, but you see, I'm not sure if you can hear us. Um, I think maybe the um, the Wi-Fi uh, might be out. Um, but if, if you okay, if you want to post something in the chat, I can read it out. But okay, I'm going to move on to the next question. Um, so this question is from um, Faisal. So Faisal Abdus, if you have a question for Josephine, can you please go ahead? Faisal, so call in Faisal Abdus Sattar. Uh, hi there, uh, can you hear me? Um, you are very low, could you speak a little louder? Uh, what about now? I hope it's fine. Perfect. Yes. Um, so the question is mainly for the ISA. Uh, basically, I wanted more information on temporary housing. What are we supposed to do if we're not able to secure a lease in time? And uh, where are we supposed to quarantine if we're not, if I'm not able to get my vaccine doses in time? Okay, thank you very much. Actually, um, ISA, I'm going to ask if you can answer Faisal's question um, offline so that we can give a chance for Josephine, because you only have her for like 10 more minutes. So ISA will we'll, um, answer your question uh, personally in the chat. Okay, Faisal? Thank you. Okay. All um, right. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to the next hand that we had, um, Tan Mei Singhal. Tan Mei Singhal, um, if you have a question for Josephine, can you please go ahead? Hey, hi, am I audible? Hello. Hi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, hello, uh, my question is, uh, Josephine, I got the non-degree I-20, so I wanted to clarify that will we, will we get any consular letter uh, regarding that to I mean just to get clarity on that uh, when we are having the visa interview. So those were sent out on Monday. If you have not received them, send me an email directly and we'll make sure we get it. There's a couple of, you're actually the second person this morning has told me that you didn't get it. So I'm wondering if there's something was off with our criteria when we sent it out. But we will we will want to make sure that we'll get that information to you. So just email me directly and I'll get that to you. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Great. Okay. Um, next person that we'll be calling on is Ranganath Chintala Cheruvu. Uh, Ranganath, um, if you are here, can you please go ahead with your question? Okay. Moving on to the next person that we have with a question, Ashwari Singh. Is there um, Ashwari? Sing, um, if you have a question for Josephine, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, so my question is that uh, is co-op allowed during the summer, let's say for six to eight months? You, I'm sorry, are you saying is work allowed? Uh, co-op, 
like I know there's we have internship allowed for during the summer, but can we extend our internship into a co-op? OK, for the whole, whole semester. So um, these you're talking about two different things. So in academic programs, they will have different types of what they call experiential education programs where you're merging your academic learning with real work experience. Some some departments it's an intern called an internship. Some departments it's a practicum. Some departments it's a co-op. Whatever it is, the, however the academic department structures an experience that is work that blends work and academics, right? So that is the academic portion of it and eligibility and time frame for you to be eligible for that and how it fits into your degree plan. That's a question for your academic department or the career center associated with your department. For example, for JSOM, it's going to be the Career Management Center. For the Engineering uh, and Computer Science School, it's going to be the JCS, Johnson Career Services. And then there's okay. a Career Center for everybody else. Now, once they approve you for that experience, that internship or practicum or co-op, they reach out to us and say, OK, this person has the academic approval. Please provide them the immigration approval for that experience. And that's when we come in after that piece has is, is, is been uh, approved. So they're only going to approve you because we have really close relationships with something that is going to meet the immigration requirements for us to give it to you. So first start with your appropriate career center. OK, OK, thank you. And You're I had welcome. one more question. I'm not sure if this is the right platform to ask that. Uh, when for the fall students, when is the uh, when are the job postings going to open for us? Like uh, right now, if you open the handshake portal, we are not able to see the entire interface. So I think it is locked for us right now. So when do we suppose that is going to open up? Um, no, no. I, I, well, I, I was actually going to refer them to the University Career Center. So Handshake is actually managed by the University Career Center. Um, so you can um, contact them on their website um, to find out more about that. OK, thank you so much. Thanks. Sure, thank you so much. OK, um, one more question in the, ch um, the for the hands that was raised. Um, the next person that I have is Manish uh, Patkiri. Um, is there Manish Bakiri? If you have a question, can you please go ahead? Call in Manish once. Call in. Uh, once. Hi, ma'am. This is Rangnath. I'm sorry because hey, uh, Manish is not uh, responding. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt, but I have a question. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is um, Manish? Yeah. Am I audible? Okay, Manish, I think. Am I audible? Hello? Yes. Is Manish speaking? Yes. So, so one minute, please. So, Manish, yeah. I called on you. So, Manish, you can go ahead with your question. And I think there was someone, um, Ranganath, that I called on earlier. So, Ranganath, could you please hold a second? Let Manish go first, and then you can go second. Please go so, ahead. Uh, so, my question is, assume I want to enroll to a certain class, and unfortunately, it's filled up by now. So will I be able to have an opportunity to enroll into it after I land in the US or is the opportunity closed? I mean, is the deal closed? So that's going to be a great question for your academic department. My understanding is sometimes they have wait lists uh, that you might be able to get on. And in the event that someone transfers out of that class, you may be able to get on. But that's not an immigration matter. That's an academic matter. So your okay. department will be able to help you with that. Fine, fine. Thank you. Have a good day. Yes, thank you, Manish. Have a good day. Okay, Ranganath, um, can you come forward with your question for Josephine? Sure. Hi, Josephine. I'm sorry, my mic was not working, so I had to come back and interrupt. So, good evening, uh, Joseph and Tamara. So, I have a small question, and lately I've been working on my I-20 and as well as visa. So, there are possibilities that my Arrival to US might delay, uh, and I might agree. Uh, like uh, I might arrive in the month of October. So, what about the, my classes? Like, how do I attend to the classes, and when should I uh, take this TB test? So, how is it gonna really work? Uh, are there any options that I can attend to the classes in virtual, like virtually from India, or I'll have to be there uh, enrolled uh, after taking this TB test or something? Yeah. So the academic departments are making arrangements for individuals who are not going to be here. And what we're asking you to do 
If you're not going to be coming until October, go in iComet, fill out the visa update form, give us your estimated arrival, right, for the second eight week term, and maybe if you have any sense of when the specific date that there that you will be here. That way we are going to go into our system. We're going to indicate that you are um, an FV status, that you have not yet arrived. And that way it lets your academic department and other stakeholders know that you are not going to be here at that time and you're going to be attending virtually and they're going to you're going to be in the virtual sections of your class. It also allows us to know, OK, this person should not have any um, issues with their TB hold or other orientation requirements because they're not in the United States yet. We're not going to worry about that until it's closer to your arrival in the United States. And then if we know you're coming in October, we can communicate with the various stakeholders on campus to say, okay, we have these many students coming. Let's look at what kind of TV scheduling needs to be or how we're gonna handle orientation or how we're gonna do all of the things that we need to do to get you ready to go. So the first step to do is uh, make sure you fill out the visa update form. You can fill that out as many times as you need to as things evolve over the next couple of months so that we can have as up-to-date information as possible about your specific plans or um, uh, all of your specific plans, and we can make those arrangements. But the specific answer is yes, you should be able to attend the classes virtually, work with your department, let ISSO know, and you're not going to be penalized by not being able to do the TB test, et cetera, while you're outside the United States if you communicate with us in, uh, uh, in time. Okay, all right, thank you, Ranga. Ranga. Thank, you. thank you so much. Yes, Welcome. thank you. Okay, um, I think we can get maybe one question in, one more question. Um, so this person says that the inner, okay, okay, this, I'm going to use another question. It says, I'm yet to apply for my I-20 as my loan is not approved as yet because of my admit letter, which has a dual degree, MSBA and MBA. Okay. Uh, while I'm planning to only pursue MSBA, how much time will it take for the university to revert with my, I guess maybe like correct my I-20 if I apply in the first week of July, I might not be able to make it by August the 23rd considering the delay. What is the impact? Should I defer my admission? OK, so there are a lot of questions in there. I'm going to try to make sure I catch as many as I can. OK, so what I'm hearing is that um, you have not yet applied for a URI 20. You want to know how long it's going to take uh, if you apply in the next week or so. The answer is probably still going to be the same for the next couple of months. I would plan for seven to 14 business days. We have tons of students requesting first time I 20s or switching I 20 start dates from August to October. Um, so there's a huge volume and if I were you, I would not plan for less than seven to 14 business days because that's just how, how much volume there is. Um, you were asked, I'm sorry, I missed the second part of the other parts of the question now. Yes, no, there was something about the admit letter has a dual degree on there. That's fine. Uh, that doesn't okay. affect how long the I-20 process is going to take. Okay. Okay, well then that's it. And they were asking if they should defer their admission because they weren't sure how long it was going to take to. You, what I always say with the admissions decisions is this, right? Um, there's no harm in waiting until you know for sure. Right now it sounds like I don't think I'm going to make it. Mm -hmm. um, and that might wind up being the case, but you don't have to make defer de deferral decisions right now. I think you have up until closer to the start of classes or certainly at some point in August to defer your admission. So if I were you, I would play it out and see maybe luck is on your side and the stars are going to align and you'll make it. And if not, you can just do it, you know, at the at the time right before the deadline when you know that there is absolutely no chance that you're going to get it. The other option for you to consider is do you want to start virtually right and then come later? I know that it's a very different experience. You know, when I look at, if I were to look at it for, for myself or my children, I'd probably think about the cost, right? You have the cost of tuition, but you don't have the cost of living expenses because you're in your home country and you get maybe the nine credits and already in your pocket and you can move on and maybe it'll help reduce the cost of your, of your degree over time. That's a decision only you can make about starting versus deferring. But I would say, do it closer to the deadline when you know for sure what options are available to you and what the best thing is for you to do. 
I am going to need to go. I am very sorry that I am not able to answer all of your questions. Um, I had not blocked. I had not anticipated um, this uh, the time frame, so I didn't have enough time blocked off on my schedule. I do want to let you know that uh, I, Wednesdays, and I put the link in there. I uh, earlier on at some point, um, I I will be doing webinars. It's not really a webinar. It's a group chat, right? That you can just log in, and it's very informal. And I answer all of the questions and. Um, I encourage you to do that because if if a hundred of you send me your email questions after this, I will not be able to answer that. I want you to understand that, right? So there's a couple of you I know who've already emailed me and I'll try to get to you, but please know that the best chance is to get questions during the live chat. You can get an immediate answer or you can see me on Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. CST, okay? Perfect. Thank you so much, Josephine. We appreciate it. You spent like 45 minutes with us. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> OK, um, so once again, everyone, we do see that your questions are coming in. Um, we are going to try to um, answer them. We're going to try to get through um, for as much as we can. Um, I'm going to actually ask Leticia. I'm not sure if you can hear me because I know at one point you were clarifying um, something in regards to traveling guidelines. Um, so are you able to um, finish what you were, your statement about that? Yes, thank you so much. Tamara, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes. Um, I, I just wanted to clarify that specific questions concerning quarantine. Uh, everything is mentioned on the link that we send you concerning uh, UT Dallas guidelines for international travel. Again, it will depend on your vaccination status. Um, it is important to reiterate, I know that you might know already, uh, that vaccination, because that's another frequent question, vaccination in the U.S. and in UT Dallas is not mandatory. However, UT Dallas highly recommends it, and uh, we have sent you already in our monthly email blast information about local providers. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it will depend on you when you will be arriving. We know that sometimes uh, vaccinations are not available in some countries. So we just wanted to let you know that if you decide to have the vaccination, there is a lot of availability here in the US. You can choose a provider. It doesn't have to be uh, in a certain location, just depending on what type of vaccination you would like. Uh, there are some sites such as Walmart, for example, that they even have walks in. Uh, for all the TV questions, TV test questions, because I saw quite a few, if you have specific questions concerning the TV test, please go ahead and write, uh, could you please include the health center immunization webpage, Tamara? So they can have it at hand uh, just for clarification purposes, because I saw as well some questions about it. Uh, we do have a specific dates for TV tests, and you will find out which dates when you register for orientation. However, if for some reason you would like to do your own arrangements for the TV test, you can do it off campus as long as you follow the guidelines that are included in the uh, immunization webpage for TB test. Because yes, you can do it on your own, at your own pace, with your own appointment, that, that is perfectly fine as long as it is made here in the United States. The TB test, uh, there is a requirement, it must be performed here in the United States. But I really, really encourage you to read all the information in the Student Health Center associated with the TB test, uh, the TB test information. Just because I don't want you to go take the TB test and then uh, the health center will let you know that it, that won't be valid because of certain circumstances. So read the information in advance and decide on your own for that. That's all. I'm sure we have more questions. We're still available uh, and 
we're ready to answer any more questions. Thank you, Tamara. Yes, thank you, Leticia. Um, and just the kind of, I know that some people may be kind of joining us midway or, you know, maybe some people have joined this not from the beginning. So I did post some helpful links in the chat. You may need to scroll up to get it. Um, so I'm going to share with you the links that I've posted. So I have links for our office, which is ICP. I also posted the link for ISSO advising and also um, for the ISSO email how to find your academic advisor, link to the bursar office. So if you have questions about tuition, you know, the variable rate, um, ISS, ISA mentioned about the variable rate or kind of the fixed plan. Um, so you can get more information from the bursar's office. I also posted a link for the CDC website. We can actually go and check uh, which vaccines are approved by the CDC because we know that some vaccines that are offered outside of the United States might not necessarily be um, approved. Um, well, you know, approved for like emergency use, I guess authorized, I think is, is the actual word like authorized for emergency use might not be authorized here within the United States. So as Leticia was saying, um, you know, you want to make sure that if you are trying to get vaccinated outside of the USA, that the vaccination will be recognized here in the United States. So there's a link so that you can double check the list that is from the CDC as to what is being accepted by the CDC also have the link for the health center. We also have the travel guidelines, the masks, if you want to know about masks and also the vaccination process. Um, another thing that I would just like to address in general, we know that a lot of students are trying to register for um, in-person orientation. And we're working on preparing to host and um, welcome students to UT Dallas. Um, but please note that we do have online orientation um, option available. That online orientation option is unlimited. So it's unlimited amount of seats for that. Um, we know that students are trying to coordinate everything and see, okay, when can I get here for orientation and when can I do this? But remember, online is always an option. So if you are trying to decide what you need to prioritize, like buying your plane ticket and then you have to quarantine and whatever, and you're trying to make it for in-person orientation, yes, we would love to see you, but we also know that you have a lot of things that you're trying to decide on. So just know that online orientation is an option. And just to clarify something, online orientation is not one date. It is not August the, the 22nd. Whenever you register, for online orientation, you are given access to the online modules. And so whenever that is, if it is today, yesterday, you would get access to those models and you have until, um, I think it's the 19th, which is the Friday before classes start on the Monday to complete them. So online orientation is not a one day event. It is access that you were given so that you can work on the modules in your own pace at, at your own convenience. And it's one less you know, stress just in case situations is not working out so you can get here and quarantine and you know whatever it is that you may need to do so please consider it as an option if you need to um, and also in regards to the tb test as well um, the tb test the health center does offer tb test dates but if you do need to take it off campus because it's more convenient to you and your scheduling and just how things worked out you know in your life like whenever you got the embassy interview or whenever you got your plane ticket you know, do whatever is most convenient. Um, of course, we have services here to provide for you, but um, at the same time, the most important thing is that you can start class on time. That is the most important thing. So whatever is most convenient and, you know, the way for you to get to do that, um, I just would implore you to, to um, take care of yourself in that way, in, in, in what is most convenient so that you can start classes. Um, okay, uh, hopefully. That, yes. Who is uh, sorry, this? Uh, sorry, Silish from ISA here. Uh, I just want to um, re-emphasize what you said about the links that you circulated earlier on. Um, so I, um, I can recirculate those links to all the students and um, of all the information that you said. Um, in case if people have any questions, um, they can check out those links as well, you know, as asking you and everyone else. So. Sure. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that would be very helpful. Um, OK, so I'm going to see if I can get back into some of the questions. Once again, um, this 
this event is being recorded. So if you were not able to catch it from the very beginning, um, it will be recorded and it will be uploaded. You can find it where to find the video on our orientation page. Um, so, OK, hello. Let me see. yes, hello. Who is this? Uh, yeah, Tamara, this is uh, Rishabh. Sorry to barge in. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I have a few questions. Uh, so I had been following the ICP in Instagram lives and they were quite helpful. Uh, since many people have asked questions regarding handshake services, uh, I would like to request if uh, UTD Career Center and ICP can uh, hold an Instagram live uh, with handshake services and its uses just to uh, get us uh, like known to the platform beforehand. Uh, the second follow-up question I would like to ask is about student health insurance selection. So could you run through the process of selection and the deadline for the same? And uh, the final question here is, uh, like I wanted to confirm the uh, deadline or the date where we, wherein we'll get the bursar uh, email regarding our fee structure. Okay, thank you for those questions. Um, so to, well, to, so, okay, so just, you know, I, I will allow that, um, but really, if you do have a question, uh, raise your hand or post it in the chat. Handshake is um, operate, you know, kind of uh, run by or hosted by the Career Center. So um, they might actually have information on their website for how to use Handshake. I'm not 100% familiar with their website, so I cannot say yes or nay that you know, that they have this there. But um, if I were you, I would check that out first to see if maybe they have like a tutorial or some kind of guideline for how to use it. But that's something that I would have to look into first um, before I can answer that question. Your second question about the health insurance um, question, that would be actually a question for the Student Health Center. So if you look in the chat, I have a link there for how to contact the Student Health Center. The Student Health Center also deals with student health insurance. So they would be the contact for that question. Um, and then also you had a last question about finances that has to do with the bursar's office. <laughs> uh -huh, so uh -huh. the bursar's office, um, they would be able to communicate and answer that question for you. So those are the three other offices um, for you to um, contact. There are certain things within ICP that we can answer in general, or we can tell you mm -hmm. where to go because we know a lot of students, they don't know where to go, but there are some specific questions that we just don't know and we don't attempt to answer because we don't want to give you wrong information. So whatever we tell you, Correct. we would also have to follow it up with, but you need to double check with them. So it's just best to get it straight from the source. Um, so the mm -hmm. Bursar Center and also the Health Center and then I would also double check the Career Center's website to see if they do have like a tutorial on Handshake or something like that. Sure, that, that answers my question. And uh, I would again like to request, uh, like if you could please post in the link for a live chat session with uh, Josephine as mentioned earlier uh, in the chat or on the email, that would be great. OK, um, OK, I'll see if I can. I'll see if, if anyone in the chat can help me with that link. I don't have that link um, ready on hand. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure if she posted it before she left, but I'll see if I can get to posting it um, before this session ends. So thank you. Um, and I do kind of have a little bit of a housekeeping um, flower. Our wonderful student worker who was running our presentation is asking, for students to stop um, trying to request um, control to, to take over the presentation. Um, this event, you know, is being hosted by us, is being managed by us. And so, um, you know, we have done a lot of work to prepare for this event along with ISA. Um, so if, you know, if there's something in particular, I'm not sure um, why the request to, to control the screen. Hopefully, maybe it's just an accident, um, but just, you know, maybe just try to be careful um, with, with the buttons because I know teams, teams can be funny, so just be careful with that. Okay, let's see if we can get into some more um, questions. Once again, we'll try to get to them um, as much as we can. OK, um, so there was a question about. So once again, there's another question kind of about trying to manage, you know, the time this, you know, the time that I'm going to arrive to campus and the time that I need to um, 
you know, quarantine. This person is saying that they do need to quarantine um, and, you know, get in the TB test date. So once again, as I said, um, the, for, for registration for TB test dates and for, or for, and for international orientation, those dates are open until the capacity is full. So if you do not see those dates available, that probably means that those dates are not available. Um, and so then um, the next option would be, um, especially for international orientation, would be looking into registering for online. Um, now, you are able to modify your registration. You know, maybe you registered for a certain date and you realize you cannot make it for that date and you do need to modify to another date. Well, if that other date is available, you can absolutely um, do that. Um, but once again, if, you know, if the in trying to make it in person, you know, there's a lot to coordinate. And if it's, if you find that it's not coordinating very well, online orientation is an option. The same thing for the TV test. If you find that you cannot make it to the um, TV test date on campus, then you can do it um, off campus as well. Um, so just, just put in some options there for you, because I know some students feel like, oh, I have to do it this way. If I don't do it, do it this way, I cannot do it at all. No, we provide you many, many options to make sure that you can plan and you can organize and you can get here and you can start, you know, classes, whether you come in August or you come in October. But, um, it, you know, it will be, be on you to, prior to prioritize what is the most important thing. Um, okay, so there are more, more questions about um, deadline to pay um, fees. Um, I assume that means tuition and fees. So for that question, um, that would be a question for the bursar's office or another way to find that out is something called the academic calendar. So um, if you go on UT Dallas website and you type fall 2021, academic calendar. The academic calendar has dates for when classes start, you know, when classes start in August, when they would start in October, you know, when is the, the last day, the deadline to pay for tuition and fees, all of that. So I would suggest um, consulting the academic calendar. Um, there are a lot of dates on there, so they're impossible to memorize them all. Um, so the academic calendar would be a great resource. Okay, moving on to another question. Um, and also an, another tip that while I'm on here, um, our website also has um, resources for your pre-arrival um, and also your post-arrival. So if you're trying to organize your tasks and figure out, am I doing everything right? Did I leave something out? Am I forgetting something? Go to our um, website, um, ICP. Um, and on the so go to utdallas.edu slash ICP um, and you'll see resources um, and they'll have pre-arrival resources and it will be a very helpful checklist for you so that you can know like okay am I doing everything right um, it, in regards to immigration in regards to orientation in regards to even like registering for classes when should I register for classes so that is a very helpful resource um, so that you can know and, and be confident in what you are doing and that you are doing the right things at the right time so just would like to put that out there um, okay so I did I'm checking looking on to see if there are any questions a lot of the questions are kind of the same um, some of them are different okay this there's a question it says okay um, if we are completely vaccinated in India can we attend orientation after three days or should we wait till we get a negative um, RT-PCR test so once again that question um, if you go to the chat the links that I posted there where it says travel guideline I would check that section that can answer everything that you need to know about vaccination, you know, whatever quarantine you need to do, um, if you are vaccinated or if you are not, it speaks about all of that. So um, I would consult um, the, the checklist that I posted and the link that has for travel guidelines, because it tells you like after you arrive, if you are vaccinated, this is what you need to do. If you are not vaccinated and not fully, so when it says not vaccinated, like not fully vaccinated, this is what you need to do. So I would consult 
the, the, the chat. Once again, you may have to scroll up. <laughs> um, you have to scroll up um, to, to see the, the links that I posted, but they are there. Okay, I'm trying to find any unique questions that we might not have posted as yet. I'm going to go ahead and answer one question that I saw. Uh, if I have completed online orientation, do I need to do in-person orientation also? And uh, that's a very interesting question. I'm glad it is posted there. No, it, our orientation, as you know, is mandatory, but is either one. If you have completed online international student orientation, you don't have to do the in-person orientation. As you know, international student orientation is composed of several sections. Uh, you must though uh, complete the pre-arrival modules and then the online orientation and of course attend all these optional sessions like the one we are attending now and that is it with that you comply with our international student orientation uh, if you have any more questions concerning orientation please write to us at icp programs ic programs at utdallas.edu uh, and we'll be very pleased to answer you Thank you, and, and thank you so much, Leticia, especially for mentioning about the pre-arrival modules. So the pre-arrival modules are very important. Um, you know, we have gone into the orientation center and seen that some people have completed online orientation, but they have not done the pre-arrival modules. So um, just remember the pre-arrival modules and online orientation, if that is what you registered for, um, you need to do those things. And even if you registered for in-person orientation, you still need to do the pre-arrival modules. So in, if you wanna make sure that, you know, a hold, it doesn't go, you know, in effect on, on the first day of class, um, just make sure to take care of everything um, so that you can, you know, be in your classes and not have any issues with them being dropped or being charged any fee. So please take care of that. Um, okay, um, I think, um, Leticia, um, how much more time do we have? Uh, I think, uh, let's say a couple of more minutes. We saw a lot of the questions, as you mentioned, Tamara, they have been addressed or they, uh, everyone can find the links on the chat for further consultation. Uh, so please let us know if we could answer any more questions. Um, and of course, ISA, if you want to give a final message to uh, the students, please go ahead and do it. We, we really appreciate you guys attending these sessions because it is a wonderful opportunity to know what is it that is worrying you? How can we help you? So this is not the end. As we mentioned, please contact us by email if you have any further questions. We know we're still living uh, a time of uncertainty that your own situation could be with uncertainty as well. So we will do our best to try to answer. Uh, sometimes, as Tamara mentioned, we will uh, ask you to go directly to certain departments that can answer more accurately, but at least we can point you out of where to go. Everything related orientation, please contact us. We will be very pleased to see some of you in uh, during in-person orientation. And for those of you that are enrolled in online orientation, uh, uh, the, this is a wonderful option also, especially because of the uncertainty on some of you about your visa uh, or possible visa delays that will give you uh, a peace of mind. So you don't have to worry about complying with orientation. You can do it on your own and hope that we are uh, sharing with you some very important and resourceful uh, items on there. So we, we really appreciate uh, the IS, ISA team member that were willing to share all the information they did today. Uh, I couldn't think about uh, a better organization to join in, especially those of you who are from India. 
you will find uh, a lot of support from them. Uh, we consider the ISA team part of our team because we work all year long with them. Uh, so thank you very much, both to ISA as well as to all the students that have participated today. Do you want to yes. close up uh, the session with any message? Uh, thank you so much, Leticia and Tamara. In fact, the entire ICP for having us here. I know there are a lot of questions and you guys were able to, you know, answer most of it. We try to, but uh, I think we have too many and uh, we might have like a lot of more webinars to handle these. We are planning to have another webinar uh, in the second week of July so that we answer only the questions related to ISA because uh, today it was more of ISA, so we wanted to address most of the questions related to immigration because that was our main concern right now. But we will have this webinar in the second week of July and we will try to answer most of the questions. And uh, we did see like a lot of questions were related to uh, accommodation and related to housing and also related to the uh, temporary accommodation, basically pickup. So, don't do not worry about that. I think we all have come across that. We had so many questions that we we, be, we were there at the same position. We will be able to, uh, you know, help you out in every possible way. And we will, uh, you know, answer. You can always reach out, reach us uh, on our email IDs, on our, uh, you know, teams or just WhatsApp groups. We also have another WhatsApp group uh, link, which we will be circulating. Uh, uh, which I will send it right away in case none of you have, uh, you know, been part of any other. We have totally five WhatsApp group links which were circulated by ICP. Uh, in case you're not part of these, you can, you know, uh, join this group as well. Uh, but we do not want the same person joining in different groups. So because that's like basically, oh, you're not allowing another person who to join. So we will share that link right now and uh, yeah, thank you so much everybody for joining us. We will be there to help you guys. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, Silesh. Um, and Tamara, yeah. just one second. I would like to just add one thing. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm taking up your time. It's just uh, guys, please make sure that the pickup forms and all these forms that you're filling, you please fill it only once when you have all your information intact with you. This forms, these forms will be open till the very end. So make sure once you have your visa uh, uh, sorted, once you have your ticket sorted, your itinerary sorted, only then do you fill up the forms because it'll be easier for us to arrange uh, the pickups for you guys. So just make sure of that. And again, yes, reach out to reach out to us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, WhatsApp groups, wherever you can. We're here to help. And uh, yeah, thank you. That's all I wanted to add. Thank you, Tamara. Thank you, Leticia. Sure. Thank you, Rika. Um, and great point. Great point as well. OK, so thank you to everyone for being here. Once again, this video will be made available. Um, please allow um, about 48 business hours so that we can post it. Um, but if you go to our orientation page, um, we have an error that shows you where to find the YouTube video um, link to um, for these recorded sessions. Thank you so much for, for the ICP team, Flower behind the scenes, Leticia, Tipuja, Silesh, and Rika. Everyone stay safe wherever you are um, and take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Sure, thank you all.